Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we're going to go hands-on with stacks and queues just by going through some examples. We're going to be using the Python programming language, so you can use whatever language you want and adapt it to your needs. So we're gonna first take a look at using what's built in to our advantage. All right, so to create a stack, we're just going to use a list. So we'll say data, let me zoom in a little bit for you guys and square brackets to create that, that list. And we can put some elements in here by default, but to show the behavior best, it's probably best to limit to just a few operations that are for stacks, which is the ability to push an element onto the stack and the ability to pop an element off of the stack. So to push an element, you actually use the append method and you pass the data in as an argument. To pop something off of the stack, you actually invoke pop. So that one fits nice, and that's going to be returned. So we'll just call the return variable element, and then what we can do is we can print element. A little too zoomed in, so I zoomed out a little bit. Run this, and we get a bunch of garbage, just ignore that, but the main thing is this five, which is the output from this print statement. And afterwards, when we print data, notice that it is empty. So when we invoke that pop method, the data is actually removed from that list. So the list here is the data structure and we are using it to basically create an implementation of the abstract data type known as a stack. So that might've been a little bit theoretical, but basically we're using a list as a stack. Yes, lists have other operations. So for example, we can go data dot and pretty much anything in this list is available to us for, for use. However, we probably for best practices want to limit to just a few of these, probably pop and probably append. Now you might be wondering why would you use a list and then pretty much limit its functionality by only using a few of the methods available to us. Well, it's basically for our sake, if we are trusting a stack to work a certain way, then we want to abide by the rules of a stack. If we're expecting a stack to only allow us to put things on top of the stack and remove things from the top of the stack, but then I go in here and say insert and pass in some index and put some data in here. Well, that's just going to totally throw the integrity of our stack into question. So it's probably best just to stick to the basic operations of push and pop. Gosh, Claire, why do you always torment me? Now, you may also want the peak operation, which is to look at the last element, and that's pretty easy. What we're gonna do is we're just going to append that data, and what we're gonna print is data, and for the index, just say the length of data, and then subtract one. So the length of data is always going to be one higher than the highest index. So to peek at the top of the stack, you just need to look at that last element. So running this and we get five, but note that after this, if we print data, it's going to still have five inside of it. So we didn't actually pop that off of the stack, we just looked at it. Now, if you wanna visualize a little bit more about how a stack works, it might help to do a couple of operations. So let's go ahead and say data.append, and we'll do 10, and then data.append, we'll do 15, data.append 20, and then data.pop, data.pop. Can you predict what the list is going to look like when I say print data? Well, to understand how that works, we add five and keep in mind that it's going to be the leftmost number. So when we append another number, it's going to show up on the right of five. So we'll have five comma 10 comma 15 comma 20. And then when we pop off the next two elements, we get first get rid of that 20 and then we get rid of that 15. So we're left with just five comma 10. We run this and that's exactly what we get. So that is how a stack works. Now let's take a look at a queue. So the only difference here, if you want to continue to use a list as the data structure of choice to implement a queue, the only difference here is instead of just using pop with no arguments, you're actually going to pass in a zero. 
And in this, we're pretty much just considering the left of the list. So if you look down here at the bottom, the left is going to be the front of the queue. So when we pop index zero, we're actually removing the leftmost element. So now what this is going to do is it's going to add five, then behind it, it's going to add 10, behind that, it's gonna add 15, and then behind that, it's gonna add 20. When we pop this first element, what it's going to do is it's going to remove five, and then this next pop is going to remove 10. So we should be left with 15 comma 20. We run this and that's exactly what we get. And as always, this is returned. So if we wanted, we could assign it to a variable and then use it later on in our code. So for example, we'll just print element and running this, we get the value 10 there. So that's the one that's popped right there. Now the naming here is a little funky, but if you want to basically correlate these names to the operations for a Q abstract data type, the append is going to be the in queue and this pop down here is going to be the DQ. If you want the ability to do the peak operation or to look at the element that's going to be DQ'd, it's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is say data index zero and that's going to look at the leftmost element, in this case 15. So when we run this, we get the value 15, but that doesn't actually remove it from the queue. So that is how you would do it with a list. However, the downside here is that each time we pop an element, all of the other elements in the list have to be scooted over one index, which is a, a time-consuming operation if you were to have a pretty big list. Another way to think about it is it's an operation that is O of N, so it's dependent on the list size, pretty much has to go through the entire list, moving all the elements over. We want to avoid that if possible, so there's actually another option we can use, and that's going to require an import. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to clear out our code, our terminal, and we're going to import a, a tool that we can use called a deck. So from collections, import deck. I called this a, a DQ in the previous video, but whatever, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced deck. And to create a deck, what we can do is we can say data is a new deck in parentheses. And the way you add data to this is pretty similar. You just say data dot, and then here's all the operations we can use. So we'll say append. Let's use some strings this time, Caleb. And then to remove this data, there is a special method on this. So we can say data dot pop, but not just normal pop, we're actually going to pop left. And this one doesn't require us to pass in zero because it already knows we want to remove the leftmost element. So doing that should return the data. So we'll just say element and assign it that return. So then we should be able to, after this, print element and we'll also print the list just to confirm that it's empty. So running this and you can see we got Caleb and then we got a deck of zero elements. Now, if you ever need to be absolutely 100% strict with what operations can be used on a stack or a queue or pretty much any structure you're creating, you can create a custom class. So I'm not gonna get super into this, but there might be a situation where you need to create a custom stack class or a custom queue class or custom any class. And if you're in class, the teacher's probably gonna tell you to create all kinds of useless classes. So let's just go through an example of that where we create a class called a stack. And in here, we're going to define an init method, and this is the constructor. This is what is invoked when we create a new stack. And I'm actually gonna give this a capital S here. So the only parameter in here that you absolutely have to have is called self, which refers to the object that's being created. And then inside of this method, you can define any attributes for the stack. So we'll just pretty much create a wrapper for a list. So to do that, we can say self dot data is an empty list. So it'll initialize it to an empty list whenever we create a stack. We can also create methods for the stack. So as an example, we could say def and we can name it appropriately to match the stack behavior. So we can call it push. This is also going to require self and in addition to self, we're going to take the data to be pushed onto it. So we'll just call that data. 
And here's what we're gonna do. We're going to say self.data, which refers to this list here, dot append, and pass in the data parameter here. So you can probably tell we're not doing a whole lot. We're just pretty much giving a new name to something that already exists, but you could define any kind of custom logic in here or force a certain behavior, whatever you need. We're also going to create a pop, so def pop. This is going to have self, but we don't need to pass in any other data. It's always going to remove from the same index, so we don't need to take that as an argument. And then all we have to do is say self.data.pop and return this. Now it's a convention inside of Python. Whenever you have a private variable that is not really supposed to be exposed, you can just prefix it with an underscore. So we'll put dot underscore data and update that throughout this code. And now we can practice using this, see if I got any, any errors anywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new stack variable. So to do that, we just use the uppercase stack. That'll invoke this initializer here. And then we can say stack dot, and look here, the only methods we have available to us now are pop and push. So we pretty much restricted just to pop and push. Now Python is fairly open, so if they really, really, really wanna access that list, they can just by saying underscore data, and then they have all of these methods. However, it is clear from my perspective as the user of this class that we're not supposed to do that because there's an underscore here I should just be using these methods here. So we can, for example, push some data on, and then we'll just get that data back out by saying stack.pop. And then let's print test. So let's see if this works. I probably screwed something up. We'll run this. Oh, hey, believe it or not, it actually worked. All right, so that is how we create a custom stack. Now it might be silly, but the point here is that we can basically define particular things that need to be met, such as push and pop, and then the actual logic to do those can be anything. We could do a similar thing by creating a class for a queue, or a priority queue, a heap, a map. Whatever abstract data type we're trying to represent, we can do that using custom classes and the implementation is irrelevant. All that matters is how we use that class. Right now this class is pretty simple, but if you wanted to, you could build upon this creating any kind of custom methods. So for example, we could create a method in here to implement the peak capability to see what element is going to be popped next. And for this, all we would have to do is return self underscore data and then just get that last element. So we would get the length of the same structure, self dot underscore data, and then outside of the length, just subtract one. So let's try this out. Before we actually pop something, let's print stack dot peak, and we should get the value 10 and we do, we get the 10 for the peak, and then we actually end up popping that data off, which is where that second 10 comes from when we print this variable here. So hopefully that lets you see some of the different capabilities we could do when it comes to creating our own custom classes. Right now we're just using a stack, but you could create one for a queue, for a heap, a priority queue, a tree, whatever structure you want, you can create a class to represent that. The class is going to define the different behaviors and different things that need to be stored. And then when you actually go and create an object like we did here, that's when you create an actual example of whatever we're working with. So we're creating an actual stack and using it in these lines of code.